بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسوله الكريم سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين إلى يوم الدين أما بعد Privacy is a fundamental human need It is like eating, breathing It is one of life's basic requirements As people of Iman, we need to relate to this concept and apply to our every part of our life, no matter how insignificant it may seem, but the consequences can be very devastating. Sometimes people have relationships, na'udhu billah, Allah protect one and all, but have a secret relationship that is not matloob in shariat. Even nikah is told we are encouraged to make a'lan. So some people have secret second, third, fourth wives. Ideally, it should be done properly. So a relationship worth having is not a secret relationship but a private one. Islam encourages privacy in our relationships with regards to your wife, with regards to sitter. Privacy is more important than the seer. A person who is blind, we can say it's a private matter between his eyes and himself. Means he's blind. There's a defect in his vision. But that's not real blindness. Real blindness is when people are watching you, they are monitoring you, and you don't even have a clue that is happening. You don't have a clue that is happening at all. So we as people of Iman, we should identify what is our objectives. Why has Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent me? Why have I come into this world? We are so much into dunya. We know so much about dunya, about my life, my enjoyments, my pleasures, my posts, my accounts, my followers, so much about me that that has made us oblivious of the true reality of things, the true reality of Akhirat. We have become unmindful, we have become ignorant. Shaitan has entrapped us, he's lured us into this ruthless circle. We are hoodwinked, we are deceived. So a person should come out of this deception all about me and my dunya. Like there was a wealthy Jewish businessman traveling down a steep hill in a taxi when suddenly taxi driver announced and scram the brakes have gone, the brakes have gone. The Jewish man heard this and he screamed and shouted stop the meter, stop the meter. So unmindful that death is directly in front of you and you're worried about something else. وَإِذَا جَاءَهُمْ أَمْرٌ مِّنَ الْأَمْنِ أَوِ الْخَوْفِ أَذَاعُوا بِهِ When they comes to them the news of security, of fear, they spread it. When? There comes to them some matter, whether it's a public matter, an important matter of safety of fear. They spread it, make it known amongst people. So this is a, this ayah of the Quran is actually chastising those who indulge in things before even being sure whether it's true whether it's been verified, they just disclose it, make it known, spread the news, even though it may be false. So this is, uh, these ayat are actually prohibition of disclosing unreliable, uninvestigated information. 
Adha'ubihi ibn, ibn Abbas radiyallahu anhuma a'lanu they make a'lan they, 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 they expose things likewise alama tabri so they say in the hadith kafa bil mar'i kathiban ay yuhaditha bi kulli ma sami'a that a person narrates everything he hears this is sufficient to make him a liar so when you say privacy, it's about speaking the truth, not obscuring the truth. When you have inf information, investigation, this inv investigating this information, verifying its, its truthfulness, validity. So is it true? And even if it is true, what reason, what motive do I have to spread it? So uh, Alama Nawi explained that when a person hears something, whether it's truthful or lies, and he comes of the routine, فَإِذَا حَدَّثَ بِكُلِّ مَا سَمِيَ فَكَدْ كَذَبَ Then he ineffectively would start speaking lies because it is unverified. The Rewaite of Nabi Alayhi Salaam, إِنَّ اللَّهَ حَرَّمَ عَلَيْكُمْ Allah has forbidden few things. Among them is وَكَرِهَا لَكُمْ قِيلْ وَقَالْ And just saying, just speaking things. Alama Ibn Hajar Askalani has mentioned with regards to the siyah three meanings. Ishara إِلَىٰ كَرَاهَةِ كَثْرَةِ الْكَلَامِ Just to speak a lot. Somebody Apple just speaking because we need to talk because eventually you may say something which is lies so these lies a person's life is private now forget exposing their private life you are making something which is not part of that likewise so this warning is telling us that don't say this person is like this and this person is this because it will become the norm or sometimes something is specific to a person and that news becomes viral and it's exposing a, a, a trait of a believer where we're supposed to hide faults of people and thirdly a person narrates something which may be lies ولكن يقلد من سمعه ولا يحتات له so you are saying something which is not the truth like has been mentioned it was said and so and so said in that riwaya this hadith is referring to conveying any speech without investigating the reliability and the genuineness and disclosing information من حدث بحديث وهو يرى أنه كذب فهو أحد الكاذبين somebody narrates hadith while knowing it is false then he is one of the two liars firstly he invented it and secondly you spread in a lie the riwayat of Azad Umar bin Khattab radiyallahu an when he was informed of the talaq of the azwaj mutahharat then after hearing people in the masjid talking about this news he immediately went to Nabi alayhi salatu was salam and asked have you divorced your wives? This I'm verified no Allahu Akbar so then Umar radiallahu anhu went back to the masjid and he made a alan the Nabi of Allah did not divorce his wives. So وَإِذَا جَاءَهُمْ أَمْرٌ When any matter comes then verify properly investigate the matter. So extraction of information and, and, and finding proper resources is part of deen. So it needs to be verified. Alama Raghib Asfahani 
you say إذا أتسر من قلة الصبر exposing secrets shows you do not have patience is a shortage of patience and self-control self-discipline وديق الصدر any person's heart and chest is constrained وتوصف به ضعفة الرجل والسبيان والنساء and this is a very great weakness amongst people so keeping secrets is part of deen and we need to learn how to keep a secret also so uh, we shouldn't be getting caught we are hearing these mudakaras have been made Quran and Hadith is clear in front of us a wise person will take lesson learn the skill and make sure he doesn't get caught Shaitan does not hoodwink him likewise all these platforms that are out there may be used to abuse you that information will be abused we should be wise enough so that we don't allow anybody to extort us and use this information so skill is very important in deen and we need to learn the skill to protect ourselves, to preserve ourselves whether it's outdoors, whether it's safety, whether it's security whether it's whichever aspect a believer is wise you see, there was a lady walking once on the seashore and she found a bottle so she picked up the bottle and as she opened up the bottle a jinn appeared so he said you've saved me I will grant you three wishes but whatever you're going to ask for your husband will get double of that so the jinn said you understand the instructions she said yes what's your first wish so she said I've been always wanting a Ferrari he said done deal you got a Ferrari but your husband's gonna have two Ferraris so uh, she said fine done deal okay what's your second wish she said uh, I need an offshore bank account with a million dollars the jean said your husband's gonna have two months she said no problem done and what's your third wish so he said think well remember your husband now has got two Ferraris and two million dollars she said um, I always wanted to donate a kidney I always wanted to donate a kidney so remove my kidney so wisdom the people of Iman don't just do things we, we, we take lesson like in Oregon Columbia River around 2,000 ships have been lost so uh, between the fog, the, 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 the darkness, the, the gale forces, the river, the currents so that, that, that's been known as the graveyard of the Pacific the graveyard of the Pacific so when a, a river pilot boards a ship coming from the Pacific and it's foggy, the waves are high then he will advise the captain drop the anchor until conditions improve so here we are saying drop your anchor until death we say do not use the internet do not use email do not go onto these platforms until until you take all the precautions but many people will continue as normal and uh, be oblivious so we've been warned there are a lot of examples in, in, in a 50 year old Australian investment banker planned something once a wealthy CEO of Sydney in Australia he got into the house took the 18 year old daughter who was home alone he attached a, a device to her neck and warned that it would go off if she moved he left a ransom note on a USB digital storage device around her neck and it included instructions 
to email him at so and so email at gmail dot com. So anyway, the police came in. They were notified. They retrieved the USB device, and they came up with a name. Then they accessed his email address. They compared the Gmail account, and they found that on that afternoon, from a library, once and then twice from a store. You get these internet stores. He accessed his email. So they went to those places, pull out the surveillance cameras, and they found his description. Part of the footage was his vehicle with the registration license plate, and uh, they tracked him. And he took a flight from Sydney to Chicago, where when he landed. He was arrested immediately by FBI agents. So, what's the moral of the story? Firstly, the secret message was written on Microsoft Word, so that uh, USB revealed the author's details. So, there is metadata on a a, a Word document. Which many people don't know how to delete. Secondly, email. This email revealed everything: his details, his account, his location. Thirdly, people going into stores thinking that you are synonymous, uh, anonymous. It's not like that. Because there's footage. There's there's, there's a track record. So uh, likewise, his vehicle's details was 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 compromised. So anonymity is very important. Sometimes a person feels, okay, I've got a strong password. That's not enough. In two thousand and eleven, a person was arrested for hacking uh, emails of dozens of celebrities. So, uh, likewise, in 2008, somebody who hacked uh, Sarah Palin's account also was arrested by basic information of the person. So, if you know the person's birth date, you know the high school. So, the recovery for forgotten passwords. So that again brings the point up. That even on our recovery, we shouldn't be using our normal everyday information. Nobody that even knows you must able to fill in that information. So we are too gullible. We just use our everyday normal things. Our patterns are the same. So learn to change. Learn to 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 evolve. If anybody wants to get into your email, it's very easy. You can get around your password and uh, access all your information. So uh, vulnerability with regards to emails. So a person generally will sign in with a Yahoo, with a Gmail, Outlook, and open an account. So uh, these these retro accounts are. Can be compromised very easy. So from your Gmail to your Apple to AT and T to Microsoft, um, the hosting companies. So even if a person checks the email and deletes it, it's all possibility that it will be stored in the servers. So uh, besides that. Any email within a server is scanned, and outside the server is also scanned. And hosting companies have access to scan it. Whether they scan it for malware, that email is going through third parties. So in the olden days, you had a post office box. It was sealed. There was some form of secrecy. The risk of anybody ever going into your Post box would be people inside the system, and it was restricted. Nowadays, it's so easy. 
to access all this information. So ease of, of technology has caused compromise. So all these free services are not free. It comes with a price. So ideally, and we'll get into it inshallah, which service should we be using? What service should we pay for? And uh, make sure that uh, our life, our privacy is not compromised. The Amal for today is to perform Salah on its proper time, whether it's the men and Adhan goes, before the Adhan goes, we should be in the Masjid. Likewise, the Masturat as well. Sa'altu Rasul Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Ayyul Amali Ahabbu Ilallah Which Amal is the most beloved to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala? Qala As-Salatu Ala Waqtiha Salat on its proper time. Su'ila Ayyul Amali Afdal Which Amal is the best Amal? As-Salatu Ala Waqtiha Reading Salah on its proper time. May Allah give us topic of making amal wa akhiru da'wana. Alhamdulillah. Ya Rabbil Alameen.